give it up for our next performer, it's Tamsin Savory. Good afternoon, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, or people. I should say that's probably the more inclusive term. Sorry, people and vegans. <laughs> you might have noticed already uh, that I am what you Aussies like to call a pom. Now, don't worry, I'm not here to take your land. I'm just here to insult your beliefs and opinions and force my way of life upon you all. See, we're not all that bad. In any case, I do hope you've enjoyed the comedy so far because I fear it is about to take a sharp turn for the worse. Uh, the following may be considered offensive. You see, my only measure of whether or not I am taking things too far is my father, who is a straight, white, middle-aged man. Yeah, not a great yardstick. <laughs> Uh, when considering what stories I would tell you all tonight, uh, I must confess I ran into a slight bit of a problem. You see, while my life is filled with wonderfully stupid people who do amazingly stupid things, most of them are here in the audience tonight. So I shall be picking upon myself. The good news is there's still a lot to make fun of. I am, admittedly, just a little bit of a nerd. Maybe more than a little. I speak Klingon. Nuknech! <laughs> that means hello. I even live the lifestyle of a Dalek. I too never leave the house and am obsessed with the doctor. I even have a shrine to Dr. Leonard McCoy on the wall of my room. Yeah, old school Star Trek candles, a picture of him, and even an inscription of the classic Lord's Prayer adapted to the worship of Dr. McCoy. Now, I know that you would love for me to read that to you because poetry and Star Trek are so popular right now. <laughs> I shall give to you the final lines. Let us pray. Sir, you seem concerned. Let me reassure you, Dr. McCoy isn't real. This will be just like praying to God. <laughs> Please, everyone, heads bowed, eyes closed, hands together. Lead us not into the transporter, but deliver us from Andorian shingles. For thine is the biobed the quarantine, and the captain, now and until the hole cracks and our blood boils in 13 seconds. Damn it, Jim. <laughs> I mean no disrespect to any religious people in the audience, of course. I too used to have an imaginary friend when I was younger. Religion tends to get a bad rap, and Rather unfairly, I feel. Yes, there's the sexism and the greed and the corruption and the homophobia. But what is often overlooked is the very vital, very useful service that religion provides to society in weeding out the crazy people. <laughs> Speaking of weeding out people, you guys have heard of this disease that's going around lately? Yeah? Terrible, isn't it? Highly contagious leaves you isolated from friends and family, and often shows no outward symptoms until it's too late. Being gay. <laughs> and, let, <laughs> and let me tell you, it is everywhere. You can hardly swing a cat these days without it eating someone's pet frog. Must be something in the water. You in the front row, you'd better watch out. If I cough too hard, you might find yourself with a woodworking project on the kitchen table <laughs> or rollerblading in a sequined outfit. Well, unfortunately for me, but perhaps fortunately for you, uh, my time has come to an end, but feel free to come and see me after the show and I shall insult you as much as you like. 
Thank you so much. You've been a great audience. Good night. <laughs>